Hey everybody, welcome to the Protector of Season 2. Great guest today, you can see him over on my left here. Uh, actually, my right, your left, or, or whatever. I don't know how that works. I've never could. No <laughs> anyway, nobody knows. And I want to give a big shout out to the Notch Gear. Awesome hats, awesome. They sent me a new one today. They've been on a program. Um, it's cool. You could put your sunglasses in there. You can go shooting. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with them. Great veteran-owned company. Incredible organization. Just cool. Bourbon Barrel uh, custom from Cruise Custom Flags. Thank you for the awesome patch. Love it. Love veteran-owned companies. Uh, and especially those that support LEOs because you notice the thin blue line. Right, brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. We, tr we just tried for 25, 26 minutes on another program I typically use. I'm not going to give them any bad kudos right now, but <laughs> thank you for coming on the show, brother. I appreciate it. We've got a, a little bit to talk about today. I'm not going to kill you with keeping you on the line for an hour because we've just gone through 45 minutes of trying to fix this. But anyway, fellow LEO, um, been in a game for a while doing a lot of stuff, tries to humanize what we do because not everybody really understands the law enforcement community. Thank you for coming on, brother. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. I'm very happy to be here and an honor to be here. You've had a lot of great guests before me, so hopefully I can join those ranks. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I always, and I was, I typically say, hey, I, you know, when I do my intro, I'm always like, oh, thank you for another great guest, but you are a great guest, man. You have... It's not just a social media. Yeah, you can have all the followers, but you have genuine followers. Yeah. The thing about you is you actually give back to the community. Because I was, I'm, I was going to pull up some video. I don't know if I could do it on this on uh, on Zoom, but I wanted to bring up like Relentless Defender, and I was like, "Hey, I'm like, is that your company?" You're like, "No, I just support them." Yeah. But you're out there giving back, man, and you're not just giving back through funny memes and funny videos. But now with the music, that's what I really want to touch on today is your music. Because yes, humor is perfect. It makes us happy for a minute, gives us a time to smile. But let's talk about you, Elio. Let's get into your background. I asked you before during a pre-interview, how did you get into music? Uh, you know, it, it's just something that uh, I've been doing music for about 16 years now, uh, from the time I was 12 or 13. Um, and it kind of goes, it's kind of funny because I have an older brother who's eight years older than me. Um, and at the time, so we're talking 2002, 2003, uh, you had, you know, Eminem was really big. Um, mm -hmm. 50 Cent was coming out a, a couple of years later. Dr. Yeah. Dre had just released 2001. Um, and my brother obviously was huge. And that was the genre of music he listened to. Um, so as a kid, that's like all I heard growing up was, was hip hop and rap mm -hmm. uh, and like boys to men and all the stuff back from when he was younger. <laughs> um, and I just took to it and I've always been a very creative individual. I've always, from the time I was a kid, you know, remembered music lines, re uh, remembered movie lines. I was able to recite movies like I was, you know, uh, the actor in the movie from the time I was a very, very little kid. That's just always been me. I've always been into that. And um, I started writing rhymes that didn't go to music, like poetry almost. And um, at about 13 is when I started putting it to music and uh, recording on um, my desktop computer in my mom's house in my bedroom using a head mic that I got with my PlayStation 2 to record onto some program I downloaded off of LimeWire. Uh, LimeWire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Uh, you're, uh, I got to be careful. There's a bed in the house. Um, no, so that, that's just how it started and, um, got it up on MySpace music. Uh, even then I, I used the name forensic, um, because of my interest in, in this kind of, of job and career and, um, got it on MySpace music and someone in my high school got a hold of it, started spreading it all over. And, uh, yeah, that was the beginning of forensic. <laughs> forensic. I love that name, man. Cause I'm like, I'm Googling, you know, I'm like, 
I'm like, okay, where does that forensic? And then your email is like, you know, forensic six five four five two five at yahoo.com or some right. shit. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny, man. I, I got it. Okay. San Diego. I'm not going to mention anything about where you work or anything, but I lived out in San Diego a while. And the only master's degree I can get back in 2002, this is like back when your brother was listening to Boys to Men and everybody yeah, else was, uh, exactly. was a master's in forensic science. Yeah. So I have got one, man, and I'm like forensic. It's like it's badass, man. There's so much you could do with it. Yeah, and you know what's funny it, is man. when I came up with it when I was you know 13 or 12, uh, you know forensics. A lot of people think of, think of it as like CSI, whereas yeah. forensics technically is the art of debating. Yeah. So I used that name because I felt that music was a, a huge way to to express your views on things that are up for debate you know, mm -hmm. whatever it be, uh, that seemed to fit for me. And then it kind of translated and now I'm a cop and I'm like, Oh, I guess it kind of worked out. <laughs> Forensic. I love it, man. And then like we were talking before about like Detroit mm -hmm. and like, you know, you think about Eminem and like, and, and just not him either too. It's like kid rock and everybody always brings in the debate. And yeah. it's like from that inner city thing where you're like, you know what? I might have a voice. I mean, we didn't have social media back in the day, man. This is like, like when you were, when the rap began, there was no social media. It was like, okay, I'm going to get a demo out there. And if people aren't relating to it, yeah, nobody cares. Nope. And the people you have to have that relate to it are where you're at. Yeah. You're, I mean, Eminem talks about in his music, you know, selling CDs out of cassettes out of the trunk of his tracer. You know, yeah, Tracer. That's not one of the songs, but it's, it's very accurate because you had to pedal to the people that were there, your audience, which was people that you could reach out to. And now you can reach out to millions of people with the push of a button. And it allows mm -hmm. for a lot of independent, not just musicians, but independent artists, creators, business owners, um, entrepreneurs to have their product in the hands of people all over. Well, you talked about that when we were chatting before about, you know, before in order to get a, a tune up on iTunes, you had to like really pretty much sell your soul, sell your firstborn. But now it's like they need content, 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 content. And you have good produced content because I love telling people, I'm like, you can't just go out there and do a rap battle you can, and have like really shitty audio. You need to have production value and you do have that. Thanks. Yeah, no, I've, I've been lucky uh, to work with um, a recording studio here in San Diego called Studio West. Uh, they're actually um, up in the Rancho Bernardo area of San Diego. And that's where um, Blink-182 uh, oh, yeah. recorded some of their albums. And uh, I mean, Little Wayne's been in there, all kinds of people. And I've linked up with a producer there uh, named Danny, who goes by the nickname of Sonic. Um, and that, the dude's incredible. And we've worked together from the from the get-go when he, he mixed my first song that ever came out which was wolf hunter i recorded the song up in la at a friend's house um but he mixed it down here in san diego and the dude just gets me um everything that i hear without even telling him he hears it he fixes it or does mm -hmm. what i would have done and he we, he has done every bit of music i've had since my first song came out people don't understand like you know was, hold on was little wayne stunting like my daddy who was stunting like my daddy oh my gosh Come on, bro. Those are the trap music days. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, I, I, honestly, I forget about that one. I'm not oh, sure okay, about that. Whatever. One. You know, I thought you were really cool. We might just have to do this interview I now. Guess I, I guess I. I guess <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Let's let's uh, let's get back to production <laughs> value. So I have a really good friend, um, Adam Schoenfeld. So if you're listening, to Adam, awesome brother. He he's been producing um, and editing and doing all sorts of great shit for every country musician you can imagine out in nashville he's a guitarist for tim mcgraw um was it brooks and Dunst? I his laundry list of people he's worked with mm -hmm. over the years is absolutely incredible but people keep going back to him because he knows he you have this certain ear now you could be a rapper you could have great you could have great lyrics but unless you have a partner that knows how to get him out there correctly I, I, to me, as a novice, I think that'd be incredible. Yeah, and it's, you know, the hard part with, with uh, rap is easy. And I say that in the sense of that I'm good at writing lyrics. I'm good at creating the flow. Mm -hmm. Somebody else makes the beat. I purchase it from them. I go in a studio and I just talk. Yeah. Right? Bands, they really have to have their stuff together because they create from the ground up. Yeah. And I absolutely admire the hell out of bands um, 
And in fact, I would really love to start working with more people who do that and just creating from the jump, totally original music. Um, but you know, any genre of music requires a lot of work to get content out. And fortunately, um, the internet has made it much easier for, for people to do that. Well, to my friend Adam Schoenfeld, who has been country crazy for like four decades now, has a rock band called Digital, um, Digital Brain. So we'll link you up with them. Yeah, definitely. Your next cool. thing. Because oh, yeah. you remember like, you know, I'm, I'm dating myself. I'm damn near 50 now. I'm 47 and a half. And I think back of when you merged, what was it, Anthrax in NWA? Mm -hmm. or was it Anthrax in NWA? I think so. Yeah, and then you had like, you know, obviously um, Aerosmith and Run DMC. But uh, when you merged- uh, Linkin Park, Jay-Z, they did- Yeah, they did everybody, man. Yeah. Uh, Linkin Park, Jay-Z for the Miami Vice soundtrack, uh, for the, the present Miami Vice, because, you know. But yeah, man, when you merge these different genres, I think it's, it adds value to the message you're trying to get out there. And one thing we talked about before, um, when we were just chatting was your niche. Your niche is the law enforcement community. Right. But the other niche you have is humanizing the law enforcement community, humanizing that badge. I've got badges all over, man. I've, I've worn seven or eight of them in my career over the past 20 something years. Yeah. Um, but, for being, but state and locals, I've been fed forever, but state and locals have a tougher time trying for people to understand that they're human where were you like, Hey, I'm on a job. I got to do something. How did you jump into that arena? You know, it, it kind of started, um, back when it, it started with the, with the comedy videos, honestly, as, as the deputy hook on alias that yeah. most people know me as, um, there, uh, there was an app called vine that, uh, basically had six second <laughs> videos that people mm -hmm. make and they were hilarious. Um, and I, uh, my, my, former roommate who now uh, actually had just just moved out. Um, he's in some of these pictures right back there. Uh, Deputy Bookham, um, him and I went to the academy together and uh, you know, we were, we were living together and um, he kept watching these videos and, and was just cracking up at his phone. And I'm like, bro, what are you watching? That is so funny. Cause he would just laugh like a little schoolgirl. Uh -huh. And he's like, Oh, there's this thing vine, you know? And he's like, there's this guy on there named officer Daniels who does these cop videos and they're yeah. hilarious. So I'm like, oh, well, let me watch a couple of them. And, uh, you know, he did the first videos with Tammy with uh, where she, she turns the water, uh, Jesus turned the water into wine, you know, or uh, uh, I'll beat your ass if that's a ticket. The original Austin Daniels videos that I'm sure every cop in the world has seen by now. And my first thought was, I can totally be funnier than this guy. Like, yeah. I, can, I can do this. Just because that's, I've always been an entertainer. And I've mm -hmm. always been the class clown, the guy who wants to make everyone laugh. Um, so I made a video on Vine and uh, tagged him in it, and he ended up liking it, rewinding it, and messaging me, and we became very, very good friends. In fact, you can see him right there. There you go. Mug right there, and there's his ugly mug right there with Mike and Bookham and I. Um, and oh, and shout out to my beautiful wife. There's my beautiful wife. Right oh, there. there you go. <laughs> um, Thank God you did that because right now, like, if she was like, so you showed all those pictures on a wall and you didn't show me. Well, hmm, right. good yeah, luck for yeah. you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, it just kind of blossomed from there with our friendship and creating content and growing that content and filming more intense content. So now moving into the, in the music realm, I, I did music from the time I was 13. I stopped really doing it probably around like 19 because I knew I needed to go to college and I knew I needed to have a career. I had tried to go to yeah. college up in LA for audio engineering. That was going to be my route. Uh, I didn't get accepted to that college, so I got accepted to San Diego State University, uh, and I went there for criminal justice. Um, so I kind of put the music on a hiatus, and I hadn't done it for a while. I was still obviously into it, and I would write stuff every once in a while, but didn't really produce anything. Well, one day, Officer Daniels hits me up and says, hey, some guy just sent me this link to this music, and he says it's you. Is this really you? <laughs> and the song had, like, nothing to do with cops. It was, like, a total, like, wannabe gangster rap song from back when I was like 16 or 17. And I'm like, Oh hell. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that was me in a former life, man. That's what I did. And he's like, you know, you're sitting on like totally untapped uncharted mm -hmm. territory. 
And I, I, I was like, um, no, not really. He's like, why don't you write music about law enforcement and see if there's a market for it? So I said, okay, I'll see what I can do. Um, I hadn't written a song in years and I found a beat and wrote Wolf Hunter. Yeah. And uh, I, I recorded it. Uh, I bought, went to like Radio Shack when they were still open and I bought uh, a mic and um, yeah. an iRig to go to my iPhone and I recorded it onto the iPhone. <laughs> and I sent it to him and I'm like, hey, what do you think? And he was like, bro, you need to get, you need to do this. Like you need to get this out. Um, so then I went to a studio and really recorded it and had it mixed and, and now here I am two albums later and um, several million streams and a very, very thankful artist. I got to throw this out there. Now I am hooked on your music. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, let's see. Look, we're going to try technology, people. This is Jason Piccolo, um, Dr. Jason Piccolo. So let's, let's see if we could pull this up here. Let me. Uh, That's why you like Dr. Piccolo so much. You guys are both doctors. Yeah, I'm a doctor, bro. Can you believe that crap? My mom, <laughs> my mom's probably like, at least you did something with life. Yeah. Um, can you see this? Let's see if we can share this. Yes, here. I can. Oh my gosh, we're gonna hit play, and hopefully the audio comes. Oh, yeah. Forensic Todd. Forensic. Let's do this again. We can stop you. You're just invincible. Invincible, invincible. And music never stops when they turn it back. It's the end of our block. I'm invincible. invincible. Tell me what I need, not be back by the speed. Or move it till you leave. I'm invincible. There's a good show. Always staying on my game. Always going for the time. I'm invincible. 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 In a brainstorm, I've got thunder in my mind. I've got every line, the perfect rhyme every time. I've got an obsession with vending, I don't know what call it, but success was licked. I'd be an alcoholic, crushing the maze like a renegade through the haze. Sitting around, all around, meltdown. Oh no, my head's back on the. I like it, bro. I like it. Cops can't rap, but then iTunes top 10. Here we are, brother. Cops can't rap. Cops can rap, brother. I love that song. Um, it's a catchy and you know it does touch on I, I saw I heard the alcoholic you know there's there's a ton going on in the LEO community yeah you know and like a lot of you know for a tons of times I had a I don't know if you know a huge fat loser he's an NYPD guy mm -hmm. um, yeah man I've hit him out a couple times talking about just mental health what's going on in our community yeah if it takes music um, regardless if it's rap or whatever, to get that message out there, man. There's a lot of hurting people right now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Now. Okay, you're a little, you're a little bit late there. Um, yeah, no, I, I heard you talking about, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people that are hurting and going through it right now, and that's absolutely the case. Uh, and I think it's, um, I think it's something that we've been dealing with for a long time in the law enforcement community. Mm -hmm. um, I, if not forever in the law enforcement community, but I think that there's a cultural shift right now that's allowing it to come to the forefront and explain why, um, maybe why there's the stigma behind how cops are yep. on duty, off duty, whatever, um, which is great because the more that it comes to the forefront, the more we can understand that. Um, and hiding it as being taboo is not, it's not going to help anybody. It's not going to keep cops out of the grave. So um, we got to bring it up. We got to bring it to the forefront and we can't be shy about our, our own issues because we're people. Stigma has held people back in the law enforcement and military community forever, man, trying to come forward to get help. Uh, but now I think you're right. I think people, Hey, you know what, if I want to come forward and say, Hey, look, man, that was a shitty experience. Yeah. If you're an asshole supervisor, manager, leader, or anybody in charge of your troops, uh, whether that's domestic or abroad, law enforcement, military, emergency responders, and you don't let your people seek help, then you're an asshole. Yeah, and, and I think the big battle, at least for the people that I've uh, dealt with who are going through something, is that idea that if I'm honest about what I'm going through, am I going to lose everything I've worked for, lose my career? Um, you know, and, and I happen to be on my department's peer support team. Um, and I've been able to go to a ton of training and, and a ton of great, you know, people that I've met and spoken with throughout my time, not only doing that, but with humanizing the badge, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it's, it's, 
so refreshing to know that that's changing and it, it needs to be and it should be um, because there's again people aren't going to get help if, if they think that the help is going to be worse than the situation they're in no and I, would, I always tell people like i just hit my 20 years so it's a little bit different for me i can actually speak out more than i did before mm -hmm. I never, ever wanted to talk to anybody. And this is absolutely the first time I ever actually mentioned on air about my, my thoughts of suicide, my thoughts of giving into that darkness. But I never did it before because I felt like I might lose my job. I might lose my clearance. I might lose this. I might lose that. Not thinking that I might actually lose the very thing that matters, which is my life. Right. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I, I don't know if it was just how I was raised and, and, you know, the way my mom, my mom was always very real and upfront with me about things in the world and, and how things are, her being a paramedic and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was never sheltered from, from the negatives. Um, so me personally, I've been extremely lucky that even when I've had those bad days at work, yeah. I have always been very good at compartmentalizing that to work and leaving it there. Um, I fortunately have never dealt with thoughts of suicide. I've never dealt mm -hmm. with, with the things that a lot of cops go through. And I'm very, very thankful for that. The positive for me is that because I am able to, to do this music, I take bits and pieces of things I've heard from people while doing this mm -hmm. to put it into my music so that people can relate. And, and, you know, sometimes when I listen to my, my own songs, like uh, things we see is on, is on the album order versus chaos. Um, or even saving a hero, you know, when I listen to those lyrics and, and in front of other people, sometimes I like, get like self-conscious. Like, I'm like, well, like, do they think that like, I'm talking about myself? Like, are they like worried about me right now? Like, do they think I'm like suicidal? Um, mm -hmm. but you have to, I, I have to realize that that's okay. If they think I yeah. am great, because they know that that's accurate for what cops go through. Um, and again, just taking bits and pieces of what I have had people talk to me about them going through after their critical incidents. Um, or alcoholism or, or drug abuse or, or whatever, um, being able to funnel that into my lyrics, which I think is a, a huge um, aspect of being a, a, a lyrical artist, is being able to write for something that you maybe not have experienced 100% um, and make it sound authentic. And I, I'm so thankful to the people I've met throughout doing this social media adventure that um, I've been able to tell their story through my music in a way. Yeah, and I always tell people, like, you know, that was a long time ago. I'm in a better place now. But a lot of people don't get through it. A lot of police, um, a year or two after they get out of the job, end up killing themselves. Because you lose that brotherhood and sisterhood. You lose that sense of purpose. And you're like, well, what am I going to do next? Um, that's why we need peer support. We need to keep in contact with those that just left. What if someone gets injured and all of a sudden their career is over with? Well, I don't know about you, but like I've been in LEO for so long that I don't know what my next step is completely. Right. I do now because I'm a podcaster and I do all sorts of other shit. But sure. Sure. what about those people who don't do that stuff and they lose that career? Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've been on for eight years and, and um, as a sworn uh, member of the department, uh, I was an explorer before that. Uh, so I've been around law enforcement for 10 or 11 years now. Mm hmm and I'm not even 30 yet and I can't picture doing anything else. Like if I were to not be able to be a cop tomorrow, like I, what would I do? Like it becomes your identity, it, being yeah. able to carry a gun where you go places and always being vigilant and um, having that brotherhood, like you said, it, it becomes who you are. And it would be like waking up one morning and having both of your arms and legs cut off. And you're like, what do I do now? Like mm -hmm. yeah, just yesterday I was able to do this just fine. Um, you know, and, and it, it's it's uh, it's scary and and something that we don't want to uh, to envision. But at the same time, we have to understand that we do need hobbies outside of work. We need friends outside of work. We need outlets yeah. that we could do no matter what, as long as we're still breathing. We could do. Um, and like you said, being you know you're doing your podcast. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, I feel like I've been lucky enough to be put in a position that if something were to happen, I could. You know, hell, Aaron Slater might hire me a relentless defender and let me press T-shirts. I don't know. Uh, but you know, there, there's always something and, and it's getting people to see that, that you are useful to the world, even if you're not a cop anymore, even if you're not out there answering radio calls or chasing yep. bad guys, 
you still are a productive, important aspect of our society because we need people who are willing to risk everything. And that's exactly what cops are, no matter if they're on the job. Yes, absolutely. And you have to remember that there's like a sector of your life. You said you're younger than 30. Um, I did most of my career dynamics before I was 35, 36. I'm getting close at the end of the, my law enforcement career. I'm, I'm going to be 50. Um, you get to a point where you're just like, okay, I have nothing more to prove. But what is next? You have to find an adrenaline outlet. You, you have music. Uh, me, I have writing. Other people need to find something else behind, besides the badge. Um, I always keep my badges around just so I could realize of who I was and where I've been. But there was a time years ago where I almost lost my career for something I did with the government. Something positive, people. So, I mean, if you Google Jason Pickle, you'll figure it out. I just look it up. Don't, don't blame the guy. Just look it up. <laughs> so if you know who I am, you know, I did some stuff here and there and I almost lost my career at 16 years in and trying to figure out what I was going to do next. So my whole life since 1993 with the military and everything else has been service. Right. The podcast is service. Bringing your story to light to me is a good thing. 99.9% .9 of the guests I've had have only been here for one reason is because they have a good story that supports our protectors community. Your parents lived through that. Um, they didn't always have support, regardless if you were a fire, LEO, military, or whatever. That support network hasn't been out there. You're heavily involved and have good friends with a relentless defender. Let's talk about them for a minute. Let's talk about what they're doing out there. I love the new Blue Line products. If you look around everywhere, um, combat flags with the old army camo. I got thin blue line hat, uh, cruise customs everywhere. I love supporting them. Let, let us hear about them. Yeah. So Relentless Defender, um, I got linked up with them the first time I went to police week, which was, I want to say four years ago, um, which I'm really mad. I wasn't there this year because they I know. Get really bummed. Um, but uh, I met the owner, uh, Aaron Slater back uh, the first time I went to police week. And he like knew who I was and had watched my stuff. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, you know, he, he and he's a very, very, um, he, he's a very strong upfront vocal individual and he's very confident in, in his company and what he does. So, um, you know, if you don't know him and he just like walks up and starts talking to you, you're like, well, who is this guy? Um, but you know, we, we definitely started interacting more and became friends and, um, they're just a, a, an absolutely incredible company uh elio owned um aaron's a retired uh i believe he retired as a lieutenant um they're in the houston area and i mean they've let me crash at their house when i've gone to <laughs> houston they've, you know they've given me uh, so many um opportunities that I, I can't even thank them enough but they do incredible at donating money back to law enforcement charities i, I know they're over a million dollars donated back to law enforcement charities by selling their t-shirts and their other products um, they're constantly doing things in the Houston area for law enforcement officers, families during hurricane Harvey. Uh, we were all out there. I was out there humanizing the badge, um, yeah. helping officers recover and the relentless defender guys, they did not stop for weeks, if not months. Uh, they had people sleeping on the floor of their shop. They had teams going out and, and demoing houses for cops that couldn't cause they had the work. Um, and they're just, they're, they're, they're a family. They really are. Um, and I've been very fortunate to, to work with them. And uh, that's why I'm excited about a song I have coming up to be released here in a couple of weeks called Relentless, uh, which is hopefully going to be their theme song for, uh, for the foreseeable future because they definitely, definitely deserve it. They've, they've done enough for cops that uh, we got to show them some love back. Well, I'm looking forward to that premiere of uh, Relentless. This year, you know, I love, there's so many companies out there that give back. Um, this year has been hit. It's, it's tough. Last year, I, I lost a, my best friend in the line of duty. And uh, last year, police week sucked balls because it was just so emotional. Yeah. Um, I did a piece for a One American News on him and Chris Bacon, just an incredible person. Uh, he was in the army with my wife and then him and I became best friends later on. Then we were in a border patrol together and he got killed in the line of duty in a, a Terrible car accident, but 
this year I wanted to go out there and just spread positive shit and just do good stuff and just talk to people. And, but, uh, last year sucked and next year is going to be incredible. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward awesome. to it, man. <laughs> we'll have to link up and do like some protectors crap and definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know, police week is man. It's, it's, uh, if, if you've never been to police week, you got to go. Uh, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's unreal. And you know, for me, I have a, a pretty, a pretty cool connection with that is, uh, I actually, I'm very big into genealogy with my family. Oh, cool. I actually have four fallen law enforcement officers in my bloodline. Um, possibly a fifth. I'm trying to prove the fifth one right now. Um, three of them are on the wall. One of them is oh. not yet. And I'm trying to get him on the wall. Um, and it's just, you know, to see everything that goes on and the camaraderie and the brotherhood, mm -hmm. uh, it just gives you chills. Absolutely. It does, man. I love police week. I'm looking, really looking forward to it. It's like, uh, it's a good time to get together and just talk shit, man. That's one mm -hmm. thing about our community, whether it's the protectors community is just shit talkers. And that's what life is about is talking yeah. shit. Well, it, for me, it always gave me a nice recharge and a reboost. You know, I yeah. go out there and see everything that I see, the, the happy, the sad, um, mm -hmm. the emotion, the, you know, the anger, everything that you experience at Police Week with everyone else. And you go back to work and you realize that there's a lot of people who aren't going to be able to go back to work or live a normal life because they gave up everything for yeah. the job that you're doing in their communities. And um, it kind of gives you that sense of, of pride. Like, I'm out here. Like, hell yeah, I'm out here. And I think that's a big shift in the law enforcement community within the last probably six or seven years is as you know, back when you started, you would never be caught dead wearing a blue line no. hat out in the public, <laughs> uh, putting stickers on cars, wearing a, wearing a t-shirt that has St. Michael on it. I, that did not happen. Uh -huh. um, and recently cops are tired of being stepped on. So now we're going to be like, Hey, we're here. This is who we are. And if you don't like it, sorry, come get it. Um, and uh, I, I love it. <laughs> I hear you, <laughs> I man. When I was in a border patrol, we'd have cover shirts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you put a cover shirt and as soon as you leave, you have your, or you have your border patrol tuxedo, which is a white t-shirt and your green slacks. And now they have cargo <laughs> pants, but. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, see, you see the guys at like the gas station on the motorcycle and you see yep. the pants. You, you're like, I know those pants. Mm -hmm. Just got off work. I see the white t-shirt under the jacket. I see the pants <laughs> in the boot. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk positive for a minute, man. I am a big, you know, you and I talked about it before about how you could like name. If you go to my TikTok, I, it's called host of the protectors. And then also eighties movies rock. And I got like 30,000 views, 30,000 likes or whatever for all my roadhouse eighties movies clips. Um, I love movies. I love IMDb is like my, my second best friend where I'm trying to figure out who that person was. I could quote anybody. So let's go through your police or law enforcement movies. What is your favorite police action movie? Bad boys. Of course. Definitely bad boys. Uh, and it, it's a toss up between one and two. I just watched bad boys three uh, last week. It was cool to it capped the whole thing and brought it together, but it wasn't bad boys one or two. Yeah. Uh, but man, the bad boys movies are phenomenal. Uh, end of watch. Uh, oh, end of watch. Jesus. Incredibly that was accurate be... movie. Incredibly yes. accurate movie. If Some you're not crying at the end of end of watch, you're stupid. <laughs> Seriously. No, and I was just amazed with how they, how accurately they portrayed the interaction in a patrol car with partners. Yeah. Um, and, and I know that they did a lot of, of research with having uh, Jake Gyllenhaal ride along with LAPD and all that stuff for months and months and months. And it very clearly showed because mm -hmm. it, it was like watching clips of myself in a car with my partner. I love it, man. I, you know, I'm, I need to watch that movie again. Um, and favorite comedy. Favorite law enforcement comedy. Oh man. Um, I love 21 Jump Street, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I love it. 21, absolutely. Yeah. 21 Jump Street is good. Um, even like, uh, <laughs> like Paul Blart, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I love Paul Blart, man. He's not even a cop, but the funny thing is, like, the interaction between cops and security guards uh -huh. that, that movie shows is is it's definitely there and it's accurate. You know, um, obviously way over dramatized. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but even going back, like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Kindergarten Cop. Yeah, like, dude. Like, yeah. Like, and I I love you know, and of course the Holy Grail would be like you know Reno Nine One One, right? Um, and now on um, Quib. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and um, 
man, I, I would love to do a show like that. And, and Officer Daniels and I have. have yeah. I'm trying have, to get those guys on the show. I hit up their, yeah. uh, their publicists, man. It'd be awesome. They're a little, they're a little busy. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're big people, big people. They're, they're big people. Big but time. yeah, man, I would love to, to make a, a show like that. I, just doing the skits that we do and being able to do a, a full length. Like, oh, my uh, can you imagine? <laughs> No, it would be insane. It would, oh man, that that would be that would like yeah. Well, okay, uh, Hollywood out there. I just had the uh, the producer of the rookie on last night. I saw that actually, and I was like, damn, maybe Jason needs to drop a line, you know? And, uh, of course, let, man. Let him, know, let him know he's got some comedy cop actors. John Steinberg, if you're watching this, which you should be. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, it's uh so much good content out there. So much good things. You're doing great things, brother. When's the new CD drop? Or do we even so, use CDs anymore? When's the next download drop? I, I do I do CDs. When I do a full length album, um, I yeah. do actually do CDs because I'm from that era of. Well, the of, audio is amazing. Well, and I just love the whole package, right? You get yeah. the cover, you get the the back cover with the songs, and you get the booklet. So whatever you want to do, it's just the whole creative process, and to be able to put something in someone's hand to mm-hmm. me phenomenal um so my second cd order versus chaos those hard copies can be bought through relentless defender uh, at relentlessdefender.com um and if you go to relentlessdefender.com you can use that promo word forensic for the promo code there i'm writing that shit down right now yeah that'll get you you free shipping from relentlessdefender.com um so they sell order versus chaos um the next single is going to be the digital single that's going to be relentless um covid has put some dampers on release time it was supposed to be released on uh, Peace Officer Memorial Day on the 15th of May. Mm-hmm. Um, when I uploaded it, it normally takes seven days. And they said, hey, it's going to take three weeks or more. And I said, <laughs> great, excellent, thank you. So um, kind of tentative on when that's going to come out. I'm hoping it'll be out before the end of May. Um, a, a phenomenal, phenomenal track, really high energy. Probably the most hardcore, rapid, energetic track I've ever done, which fits their company flawlessly. Um, and then just working on the next CD. I would love to have another album out by the end of 2020. If not, it'll be here in 2021. Obviously, you know, life happens and um, things, things get in the way. But people are always asking me when's the next music coming out because they want more and more and more. And I want to get it to them as, as fast as I can. Looking forward to it, brother. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And, man, I'm looking forward to just watching your career and, and watching you just expand out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you so. I am the pure and utter definition of dedication. Precise when I start.